I did want to touch on the receivers, both of them. Um, and, and we'll get to Johnny in a second because you and I have been on the same side largely. I think in the Johnny discussion, as as the years have gone on, we're both pro Johnny Wilson and, and what he can be. But we were talking about on the JCS hour, like this is a humongous week and and pro day as well for Keon Coleman to remind people just how good of an athlete he is. He he, he was on a basketball program that's kind of good at Michigan State, like. Yeah. You know, it, it, you don't you don't fake your way as a Spartan uh, on that basketball team. And what he was before he got dinged up and before there was a, a nagging injury that Keon Coleman had suffered around the midpoint of the season. I mean, this is a first round talent, Ira, but this is a very deep wide receiver draft. So he's got competition that he's got to overcome. It's a big week for Keon Coleman in Indianapolis. It is. And it's kind of. um it's going to be fun to watch because, you know, I think, um, I think he is going to do really well. Um, and I think he's, you know, he knows football and I think he's going to really light it up when it, when they, when they talk to the scouts, when they get him on a grease board, whether it's at this event or whether it's when they, he goes to the facilities and they start talking concepts. He's a really bright guy. I mean, he knows football at a high level. Um, I think it's all of that's really positive. And I think the the fact that, as you said, it was kind of a perfect storm of things working against him, particularly in the second half of the season. He dealt with the injuries. Uh, well, injury. He dealt with an injury that kind of slowed him down. I, we never got an answer for what exactly it is. I think it was like a bruise, knee bruise or something like that. It wasn't wasn't something that needed to be corrected, but it was something that was going to slow him down and affect his ability to practice. Um, so he had that going on. Plus the offense kind of started – stagnating a little bit, I think, in the second half season, partly maybe partly because he and some other guys weren't healthy. Then he loses Jordan Travis at the end of the season. And so, yeah, I mean, if you think back to those first three or four weeks, I mean, he was as big a name as anybody in college football. He was putting on a show with three touchdowns against LSU. I mean, he was – but it's it's almost like that's some of that's been forgotten. Um, yeah. You know, for his benefit – you know, he might have been better shutting it down, you know, for the, you know what I'm saying? Because just he, people aren't seeing, they're not remembering what they saw at his best. And I think, you know, he skipped, you know, the look, man, like fans got mad and every, I understand everybody got mad. Coaches probably got mad at all those guys skipped the orange bowl, but you know, a lot of those guys skipped the orange bowl because they, they weren't healthy and that yeah. game didn't mean what they thought it was going to mean. So, you know, Keon's going to be healthy. Jaheim Bell got healthy. Uh, Braden Fisk got healthy. A lot of those guys got healthy by skipping that game. And I think uh, he's got a chance to do really well. And I'm with you on Johnny too. I, I, that was the one of, of all the evaluations that that guy from the NFL.com that we ran on our site the other day. I didn't think his Johnny evaluation, I think he missed the mark. He, he basically made it sound like he's a slow uh, six, seven receiver. And I don't buy that at all. Um, I think he's much more quick than, than people realize. Yeah, I don't know what the 40 time is going to read, but we all know that, I mean, at that size, you shouldn't be able to gain separation off the line of scrimmage as often as Johnny did against really good competition, too. And the thing was, Ira, you know, I thought he was getting better at the routine catch, which has been an issue for him uh, before he got hurt down the stretch this season. And he had some clutch to him, a lot of clutch to him. Like, that's the other part of it. Like, we're talking about, you know, he'd have a case of the drops and, and everybody, the world would see it. But then if it was third and got to have it or fourth and got to have it like there was a chestnut hill. I mean, there's a throw on the first drive of the game on fourth down. That's a low percentage throw, and he makes the catch, and he makes it look easy. Between that and the blocking and the quickness off the line of scrimmage, you don't duplicate those measurables, Ira. You're going to take a chance on a player like Johnny Wilson, and he's got a chance to make a roster and a second contract as long as his legs underneath him work. Second contract, a third contract, because he does all the little things as well. It's a valuable dude to add to a roster on a Sunday. Yeah, I think the key for him is going to be getting in a, in a good good system with good coaches. You know, one of the things that we talked about, shoot, two years ago when he first came to Florida State, one of the comments that Ron Dugans made was that when we talked about the drop passes and all that, and he said, we focus on the positives with him because at Arizona State, that was the knock on him as he had the drop passes. And he kind of got the message. It was one of those things where Coach Dugans was basically saying, Maybe at his prior school, he didn't say this, but the message I got was maybe at his prior school, he kind of got negative uh, feedback for the drop passes where Florida State, Mike Norvell, their approach is always going to be on the positive side, almost always. And I think that was good for Johnny. So I think it's going to be important what system he gets in, what quarterback he gets with. Is he getting with a quarterback who really will will let him trust him? And Because and, I think 
I got to think confidence is part of that. And so will he get in the right place where they'll really take advantage of it? Um, I think that's going to be big for him. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Again, that happens all weekend long. You can stay uh, tuned in to warchant.com for all the updates from the combine. We've got daily updates right now. There's a thread on the site in the tribal council running down what's going on with the defensive linemen and the linebackers. But and last thing I'll say about this, Ira, is, you know, again, just reflecting on Keon Coleman, it's not just the practices that we got to see, you know, which behind the scenes, the, the athleticism that he flashed on a daily basis was remarkable. But if you really stop and think, if you're in the chat right now and you think about what Keon did this season, even though it, it ended unceremoniously, think about the punt returns and the athleticism oh, yeah. he showed there, the catch against Syracuse, the LSU game, a couple of deep shots, difficult catches in traffic. Like this dude could be a first rounder. It's just a matter of what numbers he puts up. It's going to be fascinating to document. Yeah, could could you imagine if in a different world, Tom, in a world where the SEC and ESPN don't just yeah. do whatever the hell they want and don't screw other schools and other conferences, um, if Florida State had been in the playoff, how many times we would have seen that catch against Syracuse? You know, like that what that might have done for those guys. And again, I just said I think it it benefited some of those guys not playing in the, in the Orange Bowl because now they got healthy. Um, but they all would have played if Florida State made the playoff. Every single one of them would have played. Jared Verse said this week during before the combine, he said if, if he had to do over again, he probably would have tried to play and get everybody else to play too. It's just in the time, it just that was the decision they made. But if those, you know, Keon, I don't know if he could have gotten healthy. Like that's the question. He would have had about three weeks to get healthy, and that would have been interesting. Um, to see what he looked like if he had gotten about three weeks after the Florida game to kind of really get back to what he was. Um, but, you know, because that catch that you just pointed out, like that's the catch they're going to, whenever he gets drafted, they're going to, that's the catch they're going to show. And I mean, and then the Clemson game, I mean, how clutch was that? Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't I mean, even bring that up. Yeah, that's yeah. my fault. <laughs> it's a big so play. It's, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, um, it's a shame. It's a shame he wasn't 100% healthy. It's a shame Jordan got hurt at the end of the season. It's a shame they didn't get in the playoff. But, uh, yeah, man, he he's he's pretty impressive. 